Hi everybody, this is Jean Charles Kumpingen with uh, Kiwi Apps and today I'm going to show you how to use this new feature that we've implemented over the holiday weekend um, called multivariation for key quantity. Key quantity, as you already know or probably already know, helps you manage your uh, quantity. So let's say for example you have an item with um, 8, so like this item has actually 8 for quantity on N, we're going to maintain it at 3 for a different reason. Everybody has different reason and we're not here to judge or create reasons but we provide an application that does it. Now uh, one of the things that was missing in the previous version of key quantity is the ability to use multivariation. So we created this multivariation tab. So when t what happened is um, when you create a rule. I'm copying here an item idea from uh, from this user, all his best, that uh, gracefully let me use his account for this demonstration. So we're going to go ahead and add a record. When we add a record, uh, we're going to say that this rule is active. Um, test for the video is what I'm going to create here. The item ID, I'm going to copy it here. And I'm going to keep it at a quantity of 3. And I'm going to revise it below 2. You can see that right here, it's missing the current quantity that's on the, the listing and the total quantity of the listing. That is because right here, we're not entering multivariation. We're just entering the item itself. Uh, where we want to create a rule that's, that is then going to be exploded into variation. I'm going to show you the process. So this here is going to be copied to every single variation as a general rule. Um, I do not want to be notified. I don't need to uh, change this inventory tracking method. I'll, I'm probably going to hide this uh, in the future. And I do not need to be notified when it falls below a number. So I'm going to do that and create save. Now if I go to rule and I search for this item, it created an item without multivariation item. And it created a rule with a total quantity of zero and a current quantity of zero. What it's doing right here is it's putting it into the rule so that our process can then uh, get information on this item. Over the course of a minute, if I refresh it here, uh, it takes a little minute to gather information from eBay. The system will realize that this item here is not a single item, that it's a multivariation. Here you go, it got removed from the rule. And if I go to rules for multivariation, I can see it right here. It took my item, got the title, um, the SKU number for it, bunch of information, and realized that it was a multivariation. However, it has not gotten, here I'm going to filter it so you can see it more easily, it has not gotten the information about the multivariation yet. You need to wait another minute and the process will go through and explode this multivariation. So what it will do is it will actually take this item and create rules with this keep at and uh, revise below with every single variation. This number here is not accurate at the time as it's exploding it. Let's see if I could refresh my filter and see if it has processed. It, it has not processed. We're going to wait uh, just a little minute to make sure it goes through. Let's see if I click apply again. And it did. So now you can see that this item was copied basically into two item rules with the same title because it's the same title. By the way, let's take a look at the listing to see what it looks like. Um, this is a tungsten new men wedding band ring and there's two variation. There's one for size 10 that's out of stock and one for size 11. Let's go back to uh, the rules that were created. We can see that the system has detected that our current quantity for the size 10 variation is zero. So the total quali quantity on hand is zero at the time. And we have um, currently one for the size 11. So in this case, 
there's not a lot we can do to change this variation. But let's say, for example, that suddenly uh, I have a total quantity on hand here of, um, let's see, um, 5. I'm going to have to re-add, let's see, I'm missing the total quantity on hand. If you give me a little second for this demonstration, I'm going to put it back. let me cancel and go back so this one we have a totally total quantity on hand of not one but let's say five now I'm not gonna save because obviously I'm using uh, Holy's best account that he had uh, that he's letting me use for this demonstration but I'm not gonna mess up with his inventory so uh, if I were to press save then my quantity on hand, so I'm just going to cancel instead, then my quantity on hand here would become, or my total, would become 10. And the system would detect that then the current quantity is at 1, and it's below 2, and it thus needs to be revised to 3, the quantity that we keep, at, keep it at. So really, the system works the exact same way as when you have a single item without multi-quantity. However, when you import um, an item, it recognizes that it is a multi-quantity item and it explodes it. So if we look at, for example, this other item from this seller, this item was exploded into four different size, size 5, size 6, size 7, size 8. And so easily uh, this vendor could go into here and edit size 8 and say, okay, well now I don't really have two of this, I have 10. And I'm going to want the system to maintain at 3. This is our keep at. But it, it will know that we have 10. And thus manage inventory this way or uh, quantity of, of the item inside the multivariation. So this is very similar to the way it used to work with really um, single variation or unique item that do not have variation um, in the system. Now let's look at the tab uh, for auto rules. The exact same way as before, you had uh, rules that you could create, like this person created, that all items will have a quantity kept at 3, revised below 2. So it will take every item. However, right now, if we look at it, we, we added this um, multi-variation rule. This is not checked. So this means that this rule here and you can see the no here, applies to only items that are not multivariation. If you want this exact same rule to apply to your multivariation item, you have to create another rule. You could name it the exact same thing that does the exact same thing. However, on the bottom, you create, you check this box, multivariation. Now, we also added in this version the activate create rule. In this case, because this is not checked, every single rule that will come through the system and be uh, created by this rule will be created here and all of those are activated. But if a new item would come, it would come here, it would create a rule, it would do all of that except that it would not be activated. You have now a choice to actually make a rule that will automatically create rules that might not be activated so that you can then activate them uh, on a one by one basis. So if I look here, when, uh, when um, an item is going to come, value 211 really is not used because when we say all item, it doesn't matter where the value is. So when an item comes that is not a multivariation because this is not checked, a rule will be created that will keep the quantity at 3 revise it below 2, it will notify the person when it falls below 1, so really when it, when it is sold. Um, and let me uncheck that, this is not a multivariation rule, and the rule will be automatically activated. What this means, again, the automatically activated rule is that if you click here on rule or multivariation rule, the rule is activated here, meaning that uh, we use it. When this rule is not activated here, the system will not revise any item. But it lets you keep the rule if you want to use it later. 
Um, you know, an example could be that, for example, here in multivariation, this item here, I'm having trouble managing the inventory. There's just, you know, one left. And I'm selling it on Amazon as well, so I don't want, you know, to double sell. So here I'm going to disactivate it. And that's why there's a possibility of having activated or deactivated. Um, another thing that we added in this version 1.1 is when you click on Auto Rules here, you can click on I modified um, my listing or these listings. Please pro reprocess them. So when you click this, what will happen is all of your listings will be imported. Every single listing that you have. It will be run through those rules here. And if a rule does not exist, it will then create a rule. So let's say, for example, that uh, we're going to delete this item here. And there is a rule for uh, ring, which, uh, uh, let's see. Well, actually, we have a rule for multivariation, all of them. So this item here should be caught by uh, this multivariation rule here that just picks all of the item. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, multivariation rule and I'm going to delete those two variations right here. So this item that I previously used for this demonstration, this one, is gone. It's just not there. So I've created a bunch of rule and I just want all of my item to be reprocessed. Well, I'm going to click on there. And now the system is importing my items to be processed by the rule. If I go to um, uh, um, to rules, uh, oops, here, right here, and I wait a little bit, my item will show and be imported. Uh, it's actually see if it shows in the rule already here as a single item. It does not yet. Let me see if I can speed up the process just for the demonstration here. It takes usually a little minute for the system to catch up, but I'm going to try to uh, make it go a little bit faster for you to see. And it tells me that it's already in progress, so it's got to be importing it. I'm just going to give it a little minute. I'm sorry, this is a little slowish, but it's processing it. And it's still not there. I'm probably going to cut this video or speed it up. You might see a just to speed up this video. Oh, here you go. We have our item that came here. I can see it right on top. I'm going to uh, sorry, filter for it so that you can see it. There. And it came as um, unactivated. And that is because a rule here says that if it's a multivariation, because this is a multivariation rule for everything, it will create a rule that is not activated. You can see it right here. Let's go back to our multivariation um, and just wait for a minute and it should actually do the same thing, explode this item into multi uh, variations, which basically just means multi rules. The more variation you have, the more rules will be created for it.
and I just saw it go through the logs. Here you go. It created two rules, just like before, um, but they are not activated because they were created by the auto rule. If you create them here by creating a record, you can already decide if it's activated or not and just create one manually. So I hope this makes sense. This is a little complicated. Uh, what I suggest to all of you to do, if you're not sure of, the, of your rule, is when you create a rule, just create it, uh, but do not activate it. Make it specific. You know, take something where the title contain blah, blah, so that you don't import all of your item and that you don't mess all of your items. But this way, by unchecking it, you're going to create rules that you can then easily, you know, I could easily come here, delete this variation. Oops, did I click on it? There, thank you. Delete this other variation. And once I know that my rule is working, I could just go here into the rule and change this to be actually active. And if I save, which I'm not going to do, and click here, then it would start to reprocess all of my items. Import all of my items, see if there's a rule that matches, if there's a rule that matches, it will create, if there's an auto rule, I'm sorry, one of these that matches, it will create a multivariation or a rule. What it will do is actually create just a single rule for one item right away. And then it will realize that it's a multivariation and move it from the single rule to the multivariation rule and then explode it into multiple variations. Now, the seller that uh, gracefully uh, let me use his, his account for this demonstration only has one variation, but with eBay item, you can have up to five variation. Actually, I think he has some that have two variation. I'm going to try to find them there. Um, I think it's an item that he had um, added choose size twice into it. It's probably an item that he will want to revise, but uh, that's, you know, that's his choice, that's his business. Uh, but it shows with two variations, so I wanted to show you with variation. The more variation you have, obviously, the more rules it creates, because every single variation becomes a, a possibility of an item. So, size 11 with size 11, it happens to be uh, the same you can see that here it says please choose size or please choose a size uh, but really it's variation 1 so 10 with option 2 11 9 with option 2 11 and then it goes back down to 11 so the more variation you have the more it creates um, items and uh, sub variation for it so this is the end of the video I hope this helped I'm sure you're going to have a lot of questions feel free to send them to me. Like I said, you know, give it a try. Just don't activate when you create a record here. Just don't activate your rule and see what happens. See how it's being created. This inventory tracking method here is not going to show anymore. I'm going to remove that uh, fairly soon. This is just something that we use in the background to know how to revise your items. So once again, uh, email me, send me your questions. Uh, you can contact me through if you click on support here, you get my email. You can send me email. You can go see your articles. Uh, we also do how-to videos, which this one is, is part of. Uh, we're here to help. So send me your comments. Send me your questions. And I'll make sure to make another video or, or find some solution uh, to any problem that we have. That's it. Thank you.